Hello, snackers. Have you ever wondered how to perform process-oriented tasks like archiving configs on cloud-managed equipment? In Snack Minute episode 46, Matt and Kareem chat with distinguished engineer Jason Davis, who demonstrates the open source Meraki config management project available now on Cisco DevNet Automation Exchange. Hey, Snackers, Matt DiNapoli here. I'm one of the managers of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certification. Welcome to episode 46 of DevNet Snack Minutes. DevNet Snack Minute is your weekly 10-minute all things DevNet, giving you a quick, fun way to learn about Cisco APIs, coding, and just some cool stuff that we want you to know. And today we have a three three time returning guest. I think he might be our first three time returning guest. Uh, Jason is going to talk to us about a cool little tool that he built for Meraki. Uh, Jason, please introduce yourself to those who are new to DevNet Snack Minutes. Hello, snackers, and I brought my uh, rice cakes today uh, because <laughs> you know at some point in your life we all need fiber more than just the type that we run between our uh, devices. Uh, so, uh, my name is Jason Davis. I'm a distinguished engineer uh, in DevNet, and I'm responsible for leading technical strategy and operations. Um, what I thought I'd talk to you today about is something we put into the open source community into our automation exchange software repo, and that is this Meraki settings archive and differ utility. Before you get into what that is, uh, do you mind telling us kind of the problem uh, statement that you're trying to solve here? Sure. Uh, this was actually very much customer initiated, and oh. we had a, a customer in the global financial space that was purchasing a lot of Meraki equipment, but they also had quite a bit of a legacy ITIL and TOGAF model uh, methodology. And so while they had this wonderful cloud managed equipment, they still wanted to do things that were very uh, process oriented archiving configs and doing difference analysis of them and, and then being able to do compliance checks even. And we know that the Meraki equipment does not have a config. You can't log in and do a show running or move it to a TFTP server, SCP server, or anything like that, right? Yeah. So I have a feeling you're going to talk about the APIs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so what we did, and, and you'll also see this if you're participating in a recording or, or watching live the uh, DevNet Create. I did a session uh, me rocking the Meraki dashboard API. And so uh, what we ended up doing was extracting this customer's org, network, and device lists from the Meraki dashboard API, pulling them down and storing them in my favorite data encoding method, JSON. JSON. Okay. <laughs> yes. We we took that data as JSON encoded files and put it into a Git repo. So now it's in a Git repo. We have archive. We've got the ability to do the diff analysis. And through scanning those files, we could also do compliance checks to make sure the, the various settings were done the way we wanted them by doing JSON path queries and things of that nature. What's a Git repo? A Git repo is essentially, you know, where we can store files and do version control of them. And we can also collaborate that. It's very common for software developers to use Git repos for sharing their Python files and Go files and everything else. But in this case, we're using it in a semi-unique way, which is storing a, a, an analog of a config file, which are the JSON representations of those API settings for features. First, I think what we'll do is we'll show you where you can get this because I mentioned we put this into the open source community. And so let's let's go over here and land on our automation exchange website. And uh, we got this cool feature in our Chrome browser. I can pop this and show you a QR code or a two dimensional representation of the URL. So we can freeze here for a second to get that. So right. you can take a picture with your see if that actually, works. Yeah, it actually see if works. That works. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. yeah. There it goes. Think. <laughs> yeah, take you right there with your camera, your pad, iPad, or whatever you got, right? Well, anyway, this tells you about that use case that you were asking about and some other references to sandboxes and another material that will be useful to you. 
it also takes us over to GitHub and we can look at the the project repo more in depth. And, you know, Kareem, you and I've worked on projects together. And one of the key things that you want to have a successful project is good documentation, right? right. So we spent a lot of time in here documenting what is the archive and frame uh, architecture and framework of this project? What is it interacting with and what are the dependencies? What does it look like when it is running the portals and reports that it generates? How do we install it, right? That's a key thing too. And we decided to offer this in two different ways. You can install it as you would with other projects manually. Then you can go and download the code and install all the dependencies and uh, you're good to go. Or if you're somebody who needs a little bit of extra handholding, you want the Dockerized version that has all the dependencies mapped together because you're not a control freak and you really need the help, then, You've got the Dockerized version and you could just pull the Docker down and uh, run it. You don't have to install the Apache components or the Git components. It does it for you, right? I'm assuming you have to bring in your own Meraki stuff to point it to, or are we providing with the code some type of infrastructure that we can test against? You do need to bring in your own Meraki environment and supply your org ID, a numeric string representing your organization. Uh, and obviously you have to have API permissions to your environment. However, if you do want to play around with this, you can use DevNet um, always on environment and use our org ID that's much smaller <laughs> than most companies. It is much shorter. But it will give you, yeah, it will give you uh, access to information so you can at least test this out, right? Okay, cool. And yeah, and as you're running it, I'll just go ahead. Hopefully you're seeing my terminal emulator here. And there are a couple scripts, one to get the Meraki settings into Git, and then one to run the difference analysis, which means you have to have archived at least two instances or committed to scans uh, to the repo. So here I'm gonna go ahead and run it. It's gonna take about 10 minutes, which is longer than we have, but We'll let it uh, run, and then I'll show you the results of what happens in the back. And right now, what it's doing is going after our DevNet DLab internal environment with some of our uh, uh, employees and, and grabbing some of their information about switches. It's going to show some errors because what we're doing is erroring on the side of convenience here to <laughs> grab as many pieces of the API, even if it's not supported by a device we're going to grab as much as we can. And we're using the open API spec, which gets updated every time the API gets updated. So we're able to grab new endpoints as soon as they come out with them, which means you don't have to go into the code and say, oh, well, they got this new type of switch or they got this new feature we need to add to. That's a nice follow on from our previous episode on API clarity. <laughs> we just talked about open API spec. And not to mention, I bet, I bet you use async IO, which you came on our previous episode of Snack Minute to talk about un underneath the hood in, the, in your Python script, right? Exactly. Episode 25, we talked about async IO and concurrency and, and how we could pack more work into our programming instead of doing something sequentially. When I did this with another customer, it took 57 hours because they had 3,000 <laughs> different networks and devices to scan through. And we got it down to less than 12 hours by going with okay. async IO. So we've optimized it. It's going to show here our, our commits and our scans. And after we do a few sets of commits, we can do diff reports to show the difference from one set to another. And when we click on that, it'll show us device changes, network changes, organizational level changes. We can select any feature of that and then it'll show us in a nice colorized side-by-side -side comparison if we had additions or deletions or changes. Like in this case, uh, we're comparing a July 1st with an August 8th scan set of scans. And we can see that this environment, we had some Meraki equipment that software updated from version 16.7 to 16.11. Do you take it a little bit further? So we've gotten kind of the, the 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 initial configuration what is supposed to be configured outside of the the scope of of updating the the actual firmware um do you do you go back and and fix or push back the kind of the golden 
uh, configuration, the golden image of the configuration? This first set of offerings, especially in the open source sense, is just about the visibility, showing you, collecting the information, and then showing you what's changed. But now that you have that information available, then you can take it the next step. And our CX services team is also offering uh, compliance checking, which would then use this information to compare against other frameworks that you may have, like PCI DSS, uh, FIPS or Basel 2 and 3 in Europe, if you had those kind of compliance frameworks that you were dealing with. But we did not open source that compliance engine that's still part of a CX services offering. Cool. Jason, this is great. I wish we had more time to dig into the code and take a look at it, but unfortunately, we've kind of hit our wall here today. Um, being, a, being a big Meraki head that I am, this is a very exciting tool. And, um, you know, I think people can either use it for their environments or uh, potentially use it as a learning framework for um, their coding experiences to, to be able to do those config uh, differentiation uh, matchups. And so um, that's uh, unfortunately all the time we have snackers. Uh, thank you to Jason for joining us again and showing us this cool tool. Go ahead and check it out. Get your hands on it and get working with it. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Thank you, snackers. Thanks, Jason.